Everyone, it's LS, and this is going to be a video on futures market. You guys might have already seen the Midbeast video that he did on me and Nemesis. I've been obviously doing this with the Rune for a really, really long time, but the reason that I feel like making a proper, fully fleshed out video on it is important is because there's a lot of misconceptions on the Rune that just run rampant everywhere. No one takes it. While the Midbeast video was really good at drawing a lot of attention to the rune, I felt like it could have gone way deeper in explaining it and whatnot, and that's what this is going to do. So for you guys that don't know, Futures Market is a rune that you can take passive, says you can enter into debt to buy items up to 145 gold plus 5 gold per minute, which is displayed as negative gold in your treasury. A 50 gold lending fee is added on to the amount of gold you owe after leaving the shop. So it sounds pretty basic, right? You're going to basically, you, you, you're able to borrow money in exchange for borrowing money from the shop. You're hit with a, a little bit of debt that you then have to work off after you leave the fountain. So it's pretty straightforward. A lot of people, you'd be very surprised, have a lot of negative reaction to this rune. If you just do some quick searches on our League of Legends, or you go on to Summoner School, or you actually check out miscellaneous YouTube videos, a lot of people actually flame this rune. They say it's really bad and that it's just not worth it. It's actually the complete opposite. This is a massive tempo swing rune, and it really is only going to benefit you if you understand how to leverage economy inside of a game. If you play other kind of games, especially trading card games, this is very akin to those cards that basically curve you ahead of your turn in exchange for penalizing you in some manner. So anyways, inside of League of Legends, the reason that this is super powerful is because you can walk off of a fountain and you can actually use the now gained power in order to either gain access to resources that you wouldn't have been able to without that power, or you can use it to actually leverage an advantage over your opponent to deny them resources that they otherwise would have maybe been able to obtain. So that's basically the way that you have to view this rune. For you guys that do not know, Futures Market has some pretty key buys. If you are a Sheen user, you can actually do a Cheater Recall on 4, and you can end up going into a Sheen. This is only going to be good on champions that really want to recall first into Sheen and then immediately return to lane. The other most notable one is actually the Sapphire Crystal Star with the refillable potion. So Sapphire Crystal is a component to Lost Chapter. Everyone knows about this. But there's going to be a lot of champions that early on in laning phase, they're not actually trying to win the lane. This is especially true in Control Mirrors, where you have a control mage versus a control mage and neither one of them can really kill each other or if you're just a champion that isn't designed to be trying to kill your opponent early on then futures market especially if you're using the inspiration tree is definitely going to be a rune that you want to consider mostly in part because again sapphire crystal start means that on wave five you can recall into lost chapter if you end up doing this against an opponent that either doesn't have teleport or is also needing lost chapter themselves you can then lock them into laning phase and then just leverage your superior mana advantage over them and ultimately win the War of Attrition. You guys aren't familiar with the terminology War of Attrition. It's basically an attempt to win a war or a battle by basically whittling the opponent down by means of capturing some of their personal belongings or material and ultimately winning out that way. So you can think of it as like, rather than physically beating your opponent, depriving them of food and water. In mid lane, this is a pretty common strategy. Anytime people go up against Victor, historically, one of the things that you could try to do against Victor would be to attack his mana pool. If you could attack his mana pool enough during the laning phase, you could induce an early recall. And if you made him recall early enough, historically, he wasn't able to complete his hex core. Obviously, Victor has been reworked since then, but I think that's probably Probably the most common example that basically anyone who played League of Legends might actually be familiar with. It's a very good highlighted example of a traditionally played out War of Attrition matchup that all people are again, probably familiar with. So one of the things about this is everyone's probably been seeing Nemesis do it on Malzahar, or if you've watched me play, I do it very often on Malzahar. Cho'Gath is another really good champion at doing this if you're playing an AP variant of Cho'Gath, but there's a lot of other champions that are really good with Lost Chapter. Some of the ones are, but not necessarily limited to, Anivia is another good champion, Azir, Bran, Cho'Gath, Gangplank, Jace, Lissandra, Malzahar, Orianna, Victor, Rise, Syndra, Zareth, Ziggs. Some of these champions, it's going to depend on the matchup that you're playing them into, but again, emphasis on if it's control versus control, because all too often, people will try to take lane dominant runes, but there's really no way to leverage anything inside of the lane super early on, or at least not early enough, that it wouldn't have meant that Lost Chapter could have potentially come online. The thing about Lost Chapter is, again, if you're CSing, everything super well up until wave five you're going to be able to recall immediately into lost chapter and teleport back or walk back depending on the speed of your push and how much time you bought yourself before the incoming sixth minion wave which is the cannon which means that you have even more time to get back to the lane with that you have the lost chapter you try to trap the opponent into the lane 
or you both just go TP for TP, you're up lost chapter, and they just have recipe components. From there, you leverage your eternity passive from the item into just constant abuse of mana pool generation, and your opponent just can't keep up, and ultimately they end up succumbing to the pressure that is your mana economy. Last but not least, it's not always important to start with the Sapphire Crystal. Even without the Sapphire Crystal, you still can get that wave up recall over the opponent, and thus have an accelerated item purchase and try to leverage that into an advantage while they are forced or induced early to recall and thus not actually be able to complete the lost chapter. The Sapphire Crystal is mostly for lanes that either can't really solo kill their opponent or it's not their intention to try to solo kill their opponent due to inherently being so weak super early on. Champions that are going to sort of be like this are like Ryze and Malzahar. Azir is another good one who already comes with a lot of innate power. Syndra is another really great Lost Chapter purchase user with the Sapphire Crystal, but she doesn't necessarily need to do it. Again, depends on the matchup, because her abilities are so spammable, and she generally is going to outright win most of the lanes anyway even if she doesn't have power coming from Corrupting Potion or Doron's Ring. Now, if you're starting with this rune setup, you might panic thinking that you have to CS completely perfectly. But in the first five waves, you're allowed to generally miss four to five minions during this time, depending on how quickly you're CSing the fifth wave, and you should still be able to recall and curve into the lost chapter. In some instances, you might end up having to sell your refillable potion, and that can feel really, really bad as well. But then after the teleport, if you're doing stuff correctly, you should then be able to manipulate things into your favor to either deny your opponent's CS and thus denying them potentially EXP and gold, or just, again, gaining access to CS or plates or something of that nature that you wouldn't have been able to without the aforementioned power. Now, don't get me wrong. There are going to be times where you do go into the lost chapter buy and something goes totally wrong, and then you are just down the 50 gold. Absolutely, that is a case. The same way that anything that is centered around cheating time and cheating tempo is going to potentially have a, an inherent risk to it. The problem is, is that it's very reliable to control and manipulate this rune into your own advantages if you really know what you're doing, just requires a little bit more thinking. Other champions or junglers who can take the inspiration tree, typically you'll see them do something like they'll take magical footwear and then they'll take cosmic insight, but there are some junglers that really do like sork pen boots as a recall, and if you're a sork pen boot recall jungler, then Futures Market can actually help you curve into it in exchange for half a camp. If you're curving into that kind of an item in exchange for half a camp, you're going to be clearing all the camps a lot faster. But then in addition to that, you're probably going to be able to leverage your power into gaining access to things again that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to. And that's where the real thing about this rune and the misunderstanding of it really comes into play, and it's very akin to card games. One of the other things about Futures Market is that when you start to approach the mid-game, this can ultimately end up cheating you ahead by about a minute to a minute and a half and then even more the later that the game goes because at 15 minutes in game, every other wave is going to start spawning a cannon wave. At 25 minutes in game, every wave is going to start spawning a cannon wave. But if you look at the gold of what Futures Market is going to end up giving you at that point in time, you're looking at a pretty fast acceleration. How many times have you seen champions basically be needing to complete or curve into a core item just before a dragon fight or a baron fight or something of that nature, or even a recipe component item, just because you want to get as much excess power as possible. Well, this allows you to cheat it ahead. If you're taking Dematerializer or you're taking Biscuits, you don't have that option in those states of the game. Anyway, again, when you're looking to utilize this room, ask yourself, are you using the inspiration tree already? And are you a cookie user? If you are a cookie user, how likely is it that you're actually going to use the cookies? If they're just sort of there as a get out of jail free card or an oh shit button, probably means that you could have been playing intentionally a lot better with a better game plan leading up to that get out of jail free moment and thus gained access to futures market. If you're in a control versus control mirror inside a mid lane or even top lane or something, yeah, Futures Market can actually help you out. If you're a jungler and you really like Sork Buys super early on, or if you're just a jungler in a really powerful tempo matchup where you have a very big edge over your opponent, Futures Market can help swing that edge even faster, not only early game, but also in mid and late game at second or third core item buys, especially in solo queue. So there's really no reason not to take this rune over the other ones available inside of the tree if you are going to be taking Inspiration Tree. Anyways, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to make a comprehensive video on the rune because lots of people have been asking about it. It seems like the Midbeast video got a lot of traction. I just wanted a better video out there that gave a more comprehensive overview of the rune, how to use it, champions that 
you can sort of look to when asking yourself, should I use this rune? And really just the theory behind using it. And so this is probably just going to be the, the first of many to come that are like this. Obviously, I've done one-off videos like this in the past, but I know that, for instance, there's not a very proper video surrounding Cheetah Recall that exists, and maybe that'll be the next one that I tackle.